in 100 years from now, I think we will look back and we will ask ourselves, how could we, how could the American public, how could the Chinese promote the use of coal to produce electricity when we knew that this would be devastating for our climate? Why did we not use solar power? It is abundant and we have the technology available that we need in order to produce electricity for all people on Earth. My name is Björn Lamert. I'm working at the Department of Energy Technology at KTH as an associate professor. And I'm working on solar technology. Today I will talk about a simulated sun for solar energy of the future. This presentation slide shows the use of energy uh, that is produces electricity in the Earth today. We can see in the upper green stream that we use coal for energy production and the stream is about 3.6 terawatt. We take that coal from buried coal underground from a depot and that depot will deplete over time. We will know that we do not have any coal left in about 50 to 100 years. The reason is that this depot is not filled up by photosynthesis in the same amount as we take out coal out of the ground. We can see that 90 terawatt come from photosynthesis through the conversion of solar energy. On the other hand, we see that there's a much larger amount of solar energy entering the Earth. It's about 162,000 terawatt. Now, wouldn't it be good to use that energy directly? And yes, we can convert that energy directly to produce electricity. If we look at the map of the Earth, we see the little small back dots. If we would cover these small dots on Earth in arid areas, in desert areas, we would be able to produce the electricity need that the world has today. For this purpose, we would use two different technologies. We would either use photovoltaic solar cells or we would use concentrated solar power plants. It is a concentrated solar power plant that is my topic today. How to build them, how to operate them and how to make them cost efficient in the market. Now concentrating solar power is different from PEV such that we convert solar energy into heat. We do that by capturing the solar light with a mirror field and concentrating the light to a point. In this case you see a tower power plant. At the top of the tower the solar light is concentrated and the solar light will heat up water to boil water to produce steam and the steam is used uh, to generate uh, power with a steam turbine. Now, the principles that is important uh, for this concentration uh, technology is that we have a mirror directed normal to the solar light irradiation, that the light is reflected to a focal spot, the light in the focal spot is captured in a solar receiver, the light is absorbed in that receiver, heating often a metal. The metal itself is heating up a transfer fluid such as water and this fluid then drives the steam turbine or could even drive other power generation cycles such as a Brayton gas turbine cycle or the Rankine steam turbine cycle or even the Stirling engine cycle. Now a feature of this technology is also that we easily can store the energy. Instead of storing electricity in batteries, which is pretty expensive, we can store energy in form of heat. In this picture, I show a schematic of a solar power plant where the heat is stored in molten salts in two big tanks. There is a hot tank about 600 degrees warm and a cold tank about 2 to 300 degrees warm. The heat difference is used to produce steam to drive the steam turbine for producing electricity. In this way, we can store energy in the times where the sun is not shining. That means we can produce electricity during nighttime. Now, why do we still use oil, coal, etc.? What is the real driver 
of the utilization of a specific technology. First and foremost, the driver's cost. We call it levelized cost of electricity. This is the cost that a unit of electricity needs to cover to be produced over the lifetime of a power plant. Also, there are other factors that drive the technology. It could be technology readiness and technology maturity. There could be infrastructure questions such that we have enough power transmission lines available. We might have political issues such as we want to invest in a specific technology to, to become technology leader in that field, as China, for example, is doing with PV technology. Of course, there's a risk. We want to make sure that our power plant would operate during the whole lifetime without blowing up or with, without causing any problems. Now, if we look at the cost of technologies, the levelized cost of technology, we can see that solar technology here shown in the yellow dots lies over the cost of fossil fuel producing technologies. These are indicated by the brown bar. Some renewable technologies such as water power are already lower in cost than fossil fuels. And they're used in Sweden where there's a lot of water resources available. But in other countries, there's not such as, for example, in the desert areas of the African Sahara region. There, solar power is available in abundance. And if we just can bring down the cost of uh, electricity, we will be able to have a market argument to introduce this technology in the market. What we need to do is to bring down cost. We do that by technology development. Our projection of technology development driven cost reduction is shown in this figure. We believe that we can come down to about 15 cent, uh, from 15 cent, 15 to 20 cent uh, per kilowatt hour produced power to about 10 or 5 cent per kilowatt hour produced power in the near term future. But we need to do something about it. We need to look at the technology that drives cost. And we have a number of components where we believe we can make the best effort of our, uh, of our research and development. We should have a look at the solar field, at the mirrors. The mirrors are about 50% of the cost of the solar power plant. If we can produce them cheaper, if we can make them more accurate, we will be able to come down on cost significantly. We also need to develop new storage technologies. We want to develop storage technologies that can store heat at higher temperatures. If we can store heat at higher temperatures, we will be able to improve the efficiency of the whole thermal process. If we improve the efficiency, we will be able to produce electricity to lower cost. We want to work on the power block, on the conversion technology, on the steam turbine or the Stirling engine to produce power. If we do that, we can improve the efficiency again and we can produce power at smaller cost levels. Why do we bother in Sweden? Will we have large solar power plants installed in Sweden? The answer is no, we will not have that. But we bother in Sweden because we have companies that are providing technologies uh, that can help to improve the efficiencies and the cost levels of these solar power plants. We have, for example, uh, Siemens, located in Finsbong here in Sweden. We have Cleanergy, located in Ormel here in Sweden. They both produce components for solar power plants. But how do we then conduct solar research in Sweden, where the sun is really not shining? A day like this, uh, we can see that it's cloudy. We have only six hours to eight hours of light, and we still want to do our research. So what we do is we build our own sun. We replicate the conditions that we have in these solar power plants in a laboratory. Before we build this laboratory, we need to know what we want to investigate. And we have identified the research uh, strategies to give us the specification for our solar simulator. 
We want to be able to design the key components, the receivers, the thermal storage for small-scale CSB systems, such as solar dish or mini tower systems. We want to be able to validate the design and the analysis methods that we use for R&D in this field. We want to be able with the solar simulator to verify the component's performance in a simulated condition. And at the end, we want to be able to scale up the components so that we can use them for large-scale power plants. In order to do that, we need a powerful indoor high-flux solar simulator. How did we realize this? First, we made a conceptual design. We need to identify what kind of sources of light can we use to power this solar simulator. We needed a light source with high intensity, and there we found searchlights, Marian searchlights, that have a high intensity and they do reflect the spectrum of the solar irradiation. Secondly, we need to concentrate the light such as it is, it is concentrated in the mirror field. We identified Fresnel lenses as a uh, suitable option for concentrating the light in our solar simulator. Lastly, we put together these designs and we end up with a very compact design uh, that is easy for pipe fitting of engines and has a low cost. How could we achieve all this? All this is based on our theoretical analysis of the system. We need to do both optical design analysis, we need to identify the real emittance of the solar light from the searchlights, we needed to make a model of the Fresnel lenses, and then we needed to model the solar simulator itself. After having done that, all the components were set and we could start to build the solar simulator. The construction commenced in 2014. Here you can see some of the pictures of the building phase. We started with an aluminium frame uh, and then we put in the solar lamps. This was done during 2014. We were finished with the whole design about 2015 and then we were able to inaugurate our solar laboratory. We were very proud because the Swedish king was coming to our inauguration visiting our solar laboratory. With that solar laboratory, we have now started to do designs, technology and development for the new power plants of the future. We have built solar receivers for gas turbine based power plants uh, that give a higher efficiency than we have seen before. We have tested those receivers in the power plant. You can see here the solar simulator operation. Uh, where we on the left hand side can see the lamp arrangement and on the right hand side we can see the metal of the solar receiver glowing providing the heat to the fluid that drives the engine. Finally, we have actually built a solar power plant with our components. It is a demonstration plant that is situated in Italy, in Rome, we have built this plant together with our European partners from Italy and the UK. And in this power plant, our solar receiver from KTH is driving uh, the power plant and the gas turbine. This is a first step for a cost-efficient technology for solar harvesting for the future. I'm very proud that we have been able to complete this step successfully. In the next step, we'll need to uh, implement this in the market.